Good morning, class. Good morning. <laughs> Hi, I'm Keith Moore, and we welcome you to Faith School. Faith School is the place where uh, our spirits are fed on the Word of God, and our faith begins to grow. You know, faith, when it's fed and exercised, it develops, it grows. And where we learn how to live the victorious, overcoming life that God intended for all His children to live. We've saved you a place right on the front row. Get your Bible, get something to take notes with, and come right on in here and uh, prepare to uh, have your mind enlightened with the Word, have your spirit, like we said, fed and built up. I know uh, years ago when I began pursuing the Lord uh, to learn, you know, seriously to learn about Him, He challenged me. He, uh, his spirit, I don't mean to heard a voice, but inside me distinctly said, Examine everything you believe and find it in the Scriptures. And over the course of the next year or so, I did. I kept doing that, and I was uh, surprised at how many things I couldn't find in the Scripture that I thought I had, be or I had believed, and um, even things that were contradicted by Scripture. So uh, have your mind open to be renewed, to think like the Lord does, and realize that uh, many things that people have believed in church, many things that people have preached from the pulpit are not in line with the Scriptures. And all of us have made mistakes, but be quick and ready to submit to the Word and say, well, if that's what the Word says, then mom and daddy and grandpa were wrong, and <laughs> our group was right, and I've been wrong, and because uh, he's right. And what he has said is right. So let's believe for that to happen today. Because the great thing about that is even when you find out that you've been wrong, when you find out the truth, now you know why that didn't work. <laughs> and now you got the answer what to do that can work, and the truth will make you free. Amen. Let's pray about this today. Father, in Jesus' name, all of us together are agreeing together, touching this, asking you for the anointing, for revelation, for direction, for utterance, ears and hearts that can hear, answers for today, help for right now. We ask it in Jesus' name and we say we'll, we'll be doers of it and we thank you for helping us in advance. Amen. Amen. Turn in the textbook today again to 2 Corinthians 4, Scripture that we've been looking at for a number of days now, 2 Corinthians 4. And if you haven't been with us on our previous weeks of faith school class, you can use the information on the screen and, and uh, go back to the archives, and you can start at week one and build with us up to where we are now. And it's very important that you do so because we are building on the foundation that's already been laid. In 2 Corinthians 4 and 13, he says, We, having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, and therefore have I spoken, we also believe, and therefore speak. Faith involves more than believing. Living faith involves acting on your belief. And the number one action, acting on your belief, is what you say. Romans 10, verse 8, 9, and 10 repeat three times how we got saved, how you, how you get born again. You believe in your heart, you confess with your mouth. And that confession is made unto salvation. Our high priest uses our confession to manifest things in our life. He backs up from heaven what we say on earth when we say what he said. You could say it like this. When you say what he said, he will do what you say. <laughs> uh, look with me in Hebrews, the 11th chapter. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, which is the definition of faith. Hebrews 11, 1, uh, King James talks, uh, says that now faith is the substance of things hoped for, 
the evidence of things not seen. But the NIV, and not just the NIV, but half a dozen other translations that I noticed say it like this, Hebrews 11.1 1, NIV. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Did you hear these two words, sure and certain? Actually, the Good News translation says it like this. And again, you'll find this in the, the complete English, the new century, the new English, today's English. I mean, several different translations render it this way. The Good News says, to have faith is to be sure of the things we hope for. And you can say it like this, to have faith is to be certain of the things we cannot see. So let's, let's say it like this, to have faith, to have faith is, to be sure. is to be sure. To have faith, to have faith is, to be is to be certain. So now he said sure of things we hope for or expect and certain of things we cannot see, and yet you're being sure and you're being certain. Uh, one of the areas where many are, are making mistakes concerning living by faith is that they have been taught that you're supposed to add to every prayer, if it be thy will. And that you're supposed to say basically concerning everything, if it be God's will, if it be God's will. And, and so how are we going to find out? Uh, like I had somebody ask me one time, they said, well, uh, uh, would you pray with me about this? And I said, well, do you believe um, it's God's will for this to happen? And they said, well, I don't know, but I thought, you, I thought we'd pray and, and then we'd find out. I thought, well, how are we going to find out? And he said, well, if it happened, it was his will. But if it didn't happen, then it wasn't his will. There is zero faith involved in that, friends. No faith at all. And I'm not making fun. I'm not knocking uh, anybody because I did the same thing. I remember... Years ago, I um, went to, uh, on a hospital visitation with my pastor, and this would have been, uh, you know, many, many years ago, uh, before, before I was married and, and in the ministry, just a young guy. And um, we went to uh, a dear sister's room who was suffering greatly and, and had a bad report physically. And, and so the pastor prayed, and, and I stood right there by him and, and agreed with him wholeheartedly. That's all we knew. And he said, Father, you know, God, uh, if it be thy will, heal our dear sister and, and raise her up. And, and if not, thy will be done. And I said, Amen. But, you know, looking back now, examine the prayer. What are we saying? People are saying... God is in control of everything. He's controlling everything. And that statement's not true. He's given us a free will. But people say that, and so they're saying, nothing's going to happen except it's the will of God. And if anything does happen, it was the will of God. And if it's not the will of God, it's not going to happen, ever. Well, then that means everything that's happening on the planet is the will of God. You really going to say that all the cruelty and all the death and all the terrible stuff that's happening on this planet is the chosen will of God? It absolutely is not. God has given us a free will, and there are all kinds of things that are happening that's not His will. And He allows it because He allows us to choose. And if you hear what we're saying in praying for this, this woman back those many years ago, what we're saying is, God, you're going to do what you're going to do. And so if it's your will to heal her, heal her. Of course, if it was your will, you were going to do that anyway. But if it's not your will, don't heal her. Of course, if it wasn't your will, you weren't going to. <laughs> and why are we praying? That's right. Why are we praying? Because you're going to do what you're going to do. No matter what we do, your will's already set in stone. It's not true. 
it's not true. But if the enemy can keep us unsure about the will of God, he can keep us in a faithless position. And that's a powerless place and a place of no results in our prayers or in other things. No, as long as we're questioning the will of God about a thing, we cannot be in faith about that thing. I didn't say you didn't have faith in other areas, but if you're question, let's say you're questioning whether it's God's will for you to be healed or not. Maybe you've got strong faith that God is real, that He's a good God, that heaven is real, that you're saved. Maybe your faith is good and strong there. But if you're questioning whether or not it's God's will for you to be healed, you cannot have faith for healing until you get that settled. Can't, come on, read it with me again. In the Good News Translation, Hebrews 11.1, 1, to have faith is what? Sure. To be sure of things we hope for or expect. We're expecting something and we're sure of it. Well, you think it might happen? No, I don't think it might happen. It'll happen. Well, how, how, how can you say that? Because I've, I've heard from him through his word, by his spirit, enough to be convinced this is his will. He's already bought it. He's already paid for it. He's already given it to us. Faith is being sure of things we expect and hope for. Faith is being certain of things we cannot see. I, I don't see the money yet, but I'm certain that I'll have more than enough to pay our bills and meet our needs. I don't see the change in my body yet, but I'm certain with long life he'll satisfy me and show me his salvation. That's faith. But it can't be wavering. It can't be vacillating. Maybe he will. Maybe he won't. If it's his will. If it's not his will. No, you got to find out his will before you can have faith. Go with me, please, to the book of Daniel. Because there's a, there's a passage here that you hear people preach on, talk about sometimes. And... Uh, Many people's idea about it is just wrong. And I know I'm opening up something here, but I'm doing it on purpose. Uh, because this is, if you don't get this, you don't get faith. Because you can't be questioning the will of God in an area and pray a prayer of faith or make a confession of faith in that area. Cannot. In the book of Daniel, this is the account in chapter 3 of uh, where King Nebuchadnezzar, you know, built that giant uh, statue, that giant gold image of himself. He was really into himself. <laughs> and uh, so he, he thought him being the greatest thing around. He built this giant, huge gold image of him and that everybody is supposed to worship. Everybody, and he, he calls everybody, all of those that are under him, all of his leaders, all of his people from all over his uh, uh, kingdom. And they were commanded, not a suggestion, commanded that when the music played, everybody falls in front of the king's new statue. And they worship before the image of the great king, Nebuchadnezzar. Well, as you know from reading Daniel, there were some uh, Hebrew boys there that have been told to worship the Lord God and Him only are you to worship. And so this was a problem for them to fall down and worship this image. And so uh, Hebrew, excuse me, Daniel 3, 12, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego they did not bow down when the music played. And so, verse 13, Daniel 3, 13, Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they, were brought, they brought these men before the king. So, get the picture. I mean, no telling how many people are here. I guess... You know, at least scores of thousands and, and maybe a whole lot more than that. This is a giant, giant deal. And 
there's a schedule to this, I'm sure. Uh, and it all comes to a screeching halt. And the king says, what? Hold on, hold the phone. Come here. And, and boy, they grab these guys and they drug them in front of the king. And so everybody's hearing and seeing this in the vast crowd. And he says, uh, is it true? Verse 14. Oh, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, do you not serve my gods nor worship the golden image what I have set up? Verse 15. Now, if you be ready that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, if you fall down and worship the image which I have made, well, everything will be okay. But if you worship not, if you don't fall down, you shall be cast, in, cast the same hour into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? <laughs> you watch it when people talk, start talking sassy about God. <laughs> they are setting the stage for a miracle. <laughs> a minister friend of mine, uh, there was some equipment things that he needed for his ministry and they had told him uh, business people around him that he would never have that. He'd never have that. And one fellow even piped up and said, your God, not even your God can do that. Well, we both laughed when we heard that. We thought, oh yeah, say it again. Say it again. <laughs> well, what do you think? Within a few months time, he had it. And everybody was shocked out of their wits that that preacher had that. But um, Anytime the people rail and go, oh, God can't do that. What kind of God can do that? They're setting the stage. And so the king said, what, what, what kind of God? Your God? Who's that God that can deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, verse 16, Meshach and Abednego answered and they said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. They said, we don't need any time to think about this. <laughs> we got your answer right here. <laughs> if it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. He'll deliver us out of your hand, O God. But if not, be it known to you, O king, we will not serve your gods nor worship the golden image which you have set up. Now the reason I'm bringing this up today is because there are modern translations, maybe you got one that says it, that says, uh, verse 17, if you throw us in, you know, God will deliver us. But uh, even if he doesn't deliver us, they'll say it like that, verse 18, even if God doesn't rescue us, even if God doesn't deliver us, be it known to your king, we will not serve your gods nor worship your golden image. That cannot be correct. Because faith happened here. And faith is not questioning the will of God. You might say, why would you say that, Brother Key? Because that's what it says. That's not what it says. You've got to beware some modern translations that call themselves translations because they're actually paraphrases. They're not real translations. And the, the translators are adding words uh, and they're, they're telling you what they think it means. Well, we got the author of the book. We don't need men telling us what they think it means. We need to hear what it said. Amen. Are you with me, friends? Yes, so beware of paraphrases versus accurate translations. If you... Uh, uh, I have a very accurate translation, the Young's literal translation. And this is how it actually reads. Young's literal, verse 17. He said, and I know it doesn't, it doesn't read that smoothly, but this is from the, uh, another language uh, and an archaic uh, structure. Lo, it is, is what's actually said. Our God, whom we are serving, is able to deliver us from a burning fiery furnace. Verse 18, and lo, not. That's exactly what was said. Uh, 
And they're not saying if God doesn't deliver us. Listen to how adamant they were on the first part. If it be so, if what be so? Well, they're answering his two statements that he made. He said, if you'll fall down when the music plays, everything will be okay. But if you don't fall down, I'm going to throw you in this fiery furnace. So they're saying, if you do throw us in the fiery furnace, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us and he will deliver us. Amen. Do you hear how positive that is? How clear, how strong. But if you don't throw us in, That's right. they're answering his statement. That's good. If not, if not what? If, if it's so, if you throw us in. If you don't throw us in, we want you to know, we're not worshiping your idol. Now it's really unnecessary to say we're not going to worship your idol if God doesn't deliver us. That's true. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you ain't worshiping any idols, right? You, right? <laughs> if God don't deliver us, that's an unnecessary statement. Come on, can you see this? Yes, sir. But the reason I bring this up is you've got to beware, even with translations, people are adding words changing what was said because they don't understand faith. And they think it's humility. They think it's submission to say, well, you, you know, uh, maybe he will, maybe he won't. But even if he don't, we're not going to worship your, your image. They didn't say even if he doesn't. I know they didn't because Hebrews 11 says, that the violence of the fire was quenched by faith. Hmm? Hebrews 11 says so. So we know what happened here was faith. And we know at the very beginning of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, we just got through reading it, faith is being sure of what you expect. Faith is being certain of what you don't see yet. Oh, the faith is in that first verse that we read in verse 17. If you throw us in, King, we're, we're not careful to answer you. We don't need any time. Think about this. We got your answer right here. What? If you throw us in, you just, he just got through saying, what God can deliver you out of my hand? We got your answer right here. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Our God can. <laughs> we know what God can deliver us. And if you do throw us into this fiery furnace, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us, and he will deliver. Oh, come on, can you see that? The reason why this is in the Bible and why this is the story we tell our children in Sunday school, uh, delivered out of the fiery furnace, is because of the faith. And you hear the spirit of faith in their boldness to declare what God is going to do. Come on, can you see that? That's why it cannot be that they're saying, but if he doesn't deliver us, then it cannot be. It cannot be. That's someone who doesn't understand faith. That's someone who does not understand that faith has, is based on the known, revealed will of God. It'd be like coming to be born again and saying, Lord, you know, save me. I must re receive Jesus unless you don't want me to. And, and, and that vacillation, God, heal me unless it's not your will. Uh, uh, yeah, God will get us out of here unless he don't want to. Maybe he don't want to. There's, can you see what you're saying? If that's what you're saying, it makes no difference about anything. There's no faith. There's nothing for God to work with. You have to have found and ascertained the will of God. And when they took this stand on this very public day, I mean, it's easy for us to talk about it. Maybe you've heard, uh, you know, since Sunday school, if you grew up in church, but this was a big deal. If you were there and you're already feeling the heat from that thing as they're heating it up over there, then... Uh, your flesh is crying out, hey, what's the problem? Just bending the knee a little bit and, <laughs> and saying, okay, no problem. But 
something had happened in their heart and they refused to compromise the commandment of the Lord. You worship the Lord your God and Him only will you worship. So they knew it wasn't God's will for them to bow their knee. And knowing they're doing God's will, they also knew their God could deliver them and they were convinced He would. Come on, can you see this? It's not enough to believe He can. You've got to believe He does. He has. He will. Right? Can you see this? You you not only must believe that He is, you've got to believe He will reward you for taking that kind of stand. And oh, friends, isn't it wonderful? I mean, you know, if you tell your little children and the king said he's going to throw them in the fire and so they heated it up real quick and then God moved on the king and said, don't throw them in. And he said, okay. (laughs) (laughs) So they got to go back to their seat and the kids will go, "Mm, some more (laughs) Kool-Aid, more animal cookies. (laughs) Mm -mm. That's not the miracle. Being delivered from the fiery furnace is not like being delivered out of the midst, out of the middle of the fiery furnace. This is an astounding miracle. The church has been talking about it for all these centuries. It's worth talking about, and it is such an amazing example of faith. But can you, class, hear the spirit of faith? Can you hear the spirit of faith in this when they stood up and said, We got your answer right here. Uh Uh-uh. We ain't bowing. And you said what God can do this? Our God is able to deliver us. Come on, give me the rest of it. And He will deliver us. And He did. Did He? Did He? In such a glorious, amazing way that it brought the king to humility and changed the whole thing. And the king began to pass new rules that everybody's got to worship this God. (laughs) But what a bold stand they took. Well, that's it for uh, Faith School today. Uh, Come back tomorrow. Till then, say it out loud. I live by faith. I walk by faith. I overcome the world by faith. I'm strong in faith, giving glory to God.